Hello folks, my name is Mike Cannon, part of the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Group. And today we're going to do a short video on the initial installation of a TN2312. TN2312AP or BP IP server interface, more commonly known as the IPSI. IPSIs reside in a port network. They always go in the tone clock slot and they perform the tone clock's functionality. The address can be attained either via DHCP or static IP address. As we move forward, static IP address is the more common. You can have one IPSI to many port networks or it can be a one-to-one -one relationship. A lot of that depends on whether it's a fiber-based or TDM-based or if it's IP-based. And again, you can have simplex IPSIs in a port network or it can be a redundant setup in a port network. IPSIs will be a factory default on initial installation. If it's not, the best practice is to set it to factory default. When it's a factory default, the IPSI display will say A00. What we will need for the initial IPSI installation in our example is obviously your laptop connected to the IPSI services port via crossover cable. We'll need the static IP address and the mask for the IPSI board. We'll need the default gateways IP address because we'll need to input that in the IPSI. We need to know the Ethernet switch port configuration for our connection to their LAN. And we'll need to know the quality of service parameters that the customer is using, the 802.1p and their diff serve values. At this point, we're ready to configure the IPSI. First is you can configure the IPSI prior to or after you do add cabinet. I always like to do it before because I think it makes for a smoother overall installation. First thing we're going to do is open a DOS window and we're going to check to make sure our IP address is set correctly. So I type IP config. My laptop is set up at 192.11.13.5 with the 30-bit mask, which it needs to be. I'm direct connected to the services port of the IPSI. I'm type Telnet 192.11.13.6. I am enter IPSI login, craft, and I put in the password. First thing we're going to do is see how the IPSI board is initially set up. So we type show control interface. And you can see that our board is set up with no IP address. It has a 24-bit mask and no gateway. That's the factory default, A00 in the display. Next, we type show port 1. This will tell us how our Ethernet link is set up. So right now, we're at auto negotiation, which doesn't look like it's matching the Ethernet link because it's half duplex instead of full duplex. Next, we type show QoS. And you can see the DIPSER value is 46. The VLAN 802.1p is 6. A lot of networks use 5. My network is using 5. So it's usually either 5 or 6 at that point. And we're going to have to change that. But the first thing we're going to do is set the IP address of the IPSI. First is understand the IPSI is very unforgiving as far as typing. And you can't use tab to fill in spaces. So we type set control interface, the IP address of the IPSI, followed by the subnet mask. At that point, it tells me it will be updated upon exiting. So the first thing we have to do is exit. And then it tells me when done, you want to reset it. So exit. At this point, I look back at the IPSI. It says IP now in the display. I type Telnet 182.11.13.6. We enter IPSI login. We type in craft. We enter the craft password. We first want to check, so we type show control interface. It tells us the IP address and the mask both took, which is great. But remember, it also told us that we should reset it to ensure it. So we type reset. Yes, we want to continue. Connection to host lost. At that point, I look back at the board. It's about 20 or 30 seconds later. Again, the board says IP, so it statically has an IP address. I'm going to tell that back into the board. Ipsy login, craft, the password, and again, show control interface to check. Everything looks good, except for we do not have a default gateway. So that'll be our next step. So we type in set control gateway and the IP address of our router. And the same things apply. You must exit upon completion for it to take. And then we want to reset it when done. So exit, connection lost, telling that back in to the board. 
Ipsy login, craft, and a craft password. Show control interface to check. And you can see now that the router or default gateway is now set also. But again, remember, just like the IP address, it said we must reset it for it to take. So reset. Yes, we want to continue. Our connection to host is lost. Our 30 seconds for the Ipsy to recover from reset has taken place. And we now turn that back in. Enter Ipsy login, craft, enter the password. Type show control interface. And as you can see, our default gateway after the reset is still in place. Our subnet mask and our static IP address are all in place. Generally speaking, this is all you'll have to do. Our Ipsy can now talk to the server. So about 80% of the time, you're finished. There are some Ipsy parameters that we now can configure via CM. But a few things have to be met. First, your communication manager must be 5.2 or greater, and your Ipsy board has to be firmware 46 or greater. The two things we'll look at, and we'll manually set these today, but it can be done in CM, our auto negotiation, and the disk serve in 802.1p settings. So first we type show port 1. And again, when we look at this, we can see that our auto negotiation is enabled. As you can see in my case, I'm locked on 100 meg, but my duplex is half duplex. And that's because I'm on an older LAN with an older Ethernet switch, and I have a mismatch. So we're going to go through the manual process and do the three steps necessary to lock it down at 100 full. The first command is set port duplex 1 full. Next, set port speed 1 100 meg, where MB is capitalized. Next, set Port negotiation one disable. Show port one to check. And as you can see, our auto negotiation is disabled and we're now locked down at 100 full. Again, this works on older Ethernet environments where my port is locked down 100 full and I want to match that. Again, pre CM 5.2, you have to manually do this, not an option. And it's good to know how to do this. Again, generally speaking, as we move forward, though, auto negotiation is the preferred method and what we're seeing with the newer Ethernet LAN environments. Next, we'll move on to quality of service. One thing we have to configure via CLI. And the other thing, again, in 5.2 or greater can be done via the CM admin screen. So we type show QoS or show quality of service. And as you can see, first is our VLAN tagging is off. That has to be done via the CLI screen. Our, again, 802.1p, or priority, is at 6, and our Ethernet LAN environment is looking for a 5 to set the priority tagging. This serve value defaults to 46, which is exactly what our routers are looking for, so we don't need to make any changes to that. So the first thing we're going to type is set VLAN tag on. Next, set VLAN priority 5. Show QoS. And again, now you can see where our VLAN tagging is on. Our VLAN user priority is now set to 5 after the next reset. For VLAN tagging, though, it'll be set for the IPSIs. It also needs to initially be set, or you have to set it yourself, in the Communication Manager SMI pages. And I'll show you quickly where that is in a second. So again, reset after next reset. And yes, to we want to reset. As I mentioned, if you're going to use VLAN tagging on your IPSI boards, it needs to be enabled when you're initially setting up your IPSIs in the SMI pages. So we go to installation, configure server. We're going to continue through the review notices. We're going to continue through the stop sign for backup now. And we're going to select configure individual services. We're going to select configure interfaces and the enable VLAN 802.1 Q priority tagging must be checked for you to be able to use VLAN tagging on your IPSI boards, normally done during the initial installation. Next, we're going to move into the CM admin screens. Okay, we've configured the IPSI board via CLI. So now we're CM in the CM admin pages, and we're going to need to add our cabinet. As you can see, if I type in the command list config all, it says no data in the system to list. So we're going to type add cabinet one under cabinet layout. We're going to put in G650 rack mount stack. Our location is going to be 1 in IP network region 1, and we're only using carrier A. So we're going to save this configuration. Our next step will be to type in 
add IPS 1 or add IP server interface 1. I tab down to subnet mask. My mask is 24. That matches the board, so that's correct. So under IP address, we enter the IPSI's IP address we just put in. Under the gateway, we enter the default gateway we just put in our IPSI board. Our quality service Ethernet settings will be done here. System level parameter values we'll see on the next slide where we set that, but that'll deal with our 802.1p and our diff server values that started with 5.2 CM. Remember I mentioned all negotiation, again, started with CM 5.2. And remember, we locked our board down at 100 full. So we're going to change that to no, and it matches exactly what we locked down, 100 megabits, full duplex. That's what we need to match. Next step will be to type change sys ips. So again, change system parameter IP server interface. We're going to tab down to IPSI control port networks, and we're going to enable it. After we've done that, we're going to move down to the new quality service parameters, which were introduced with CM5.2. And we're going to change 802.1p to 5 to match the IPSI board. And then we're going to save it. And it tells us, must be busied out to affect change. So we're going to save through that. Then we're going to busy out IP server interface 01A. It passed, so we're going to release it. And you can see IP server, it passed again. Next, we're going to do change IPS1 or change IP server interface 1. And as you can see on the right under quality of service and Ethernet settings, my 802.1p is now set to 5 to match that board. So again, CM5.2 and greater, that and the auto negotiation can be done from here. And this will overrule anything done in the IPSI board itself. After adding the cabinet and adding the IPSI, we're now going to run the command list config all. The IPSI appears as a tone clock. We're going to run the command list IPS or list IP server interface. And you can see that the cabinet and the CM server or CM software now see the board and its state of health is perfect, four zeros. That's exactly what we want to see. Now we can hand this off to the provisioning folks to configure the CM software. Thank you for your time today. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentoradavai.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Again, thanks for choosing Avaya.